Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everyone. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We're continuing through our examination of the letter that Paul wrote to Timothy, 1 Timothy. The Holy Spirit led Paul to sit down and write some words to Timothy, and he told him why. He said, I'm hoping to be able to see you soon, but in case I don't make it sometime soon, I'm going to write some things here to where you will know how the body of Christ ought to behave toward one another, how you're to act, the things that you're to do. And as we've seen in previous episodes, he covers a lot of stuff, so I won't recap all that again. You can go back and listen to the last half dozen episodes and get a good feel if this is your first time with us. And if it is your first time, welcome. Thank you so much for joining with us. We're looking at the fifth chapter right now, and I'm going to go back and pick up the 21st verses where we were, uh, 21st verse last time we were together. Paul says this to Timothy, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus and of his chosen angels to maintain these principles without bias, doing nothing in a spirit of partiality. And so, as I said, we looked at this in the last episode and previous episodes also, and he's just giving him some instructions not to show partiality, okay? And it's a charge before the Most High God. Then in verse 22, he says this, Do not lay hands upon anyone too hastily and thereby share responsibility for the sins of others. Keep yourself free from sins. And so he's firing all these little instructions, these commands to not only Timothy, but to the body of Christ. The last thing he says to keep yourself free from sin. That's the bottom line of what we must see from this. We have a role. We have a responsibility to keep ourselves free from sin. In verse 20, he'd actually told Timothy, that those who continued in sin, that they needed to be rebuked in the presence of all. And those that he was speaking of, more likely are the elders that were being addressed at that moment in that context. But here he's saying, Timothy, you've got to keep yourself free from sin. Body of Christ, keep yourself free from sin. Well, what is this thing about do not lay hands upon anyone too hastily and thereby share responsibility for the sins of others? What is that all about? <laughs> well, as you can imagine, there's debate as to the interpretation of this. And quite often in Scripture, there can be levels of interpretation and multiple ways of lo- looking at things. Uh, and sort of a humorous type of thing, does this mean not to lay hands on somebody and wring their neck sometime too hastily? <laughs> No, not exactly. That's not what he's talking about. More than likely what's being addressed here is the what Paul has already mentioned uh, before in this letter, and he'll mention the second letter also, um, that Timothy was gifted and that certain gifts came with him at the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. And Paul had actually been a part of that group of elders that had laid their hands on Timothy. And so there's a thing that occurs in the impartation of, Uh, that the Lord wants to release when he wants to release it with the laying on of hands. Now, this isn't to create a super-duper group of believers, okay? This isn't even to create a super-duper group of leaders, though we often act that way. You know, different churches call it different things. Some will say, well, someone is ordained. Well, that's fine. Okay, I know what you mean by that, and there's nothing. The Scripture says some things about that. Others draw lines of demarcation between the clergy and the laity, the clergy and the laity. And you really don't see that in Scripture, particularly the way that is implemented within many churches today. You don't see that at all. All that is is just echoes and leftover of the uh, priesthood of the Catholic, uh, Catholic Church of Catholicism. Okay, That type of idea that you have the clergy who have the role and responsibility to do certain things, and that the laity can't do that. Uh, that that is, you don't see that anywhere, but you do see where there is a time when people are praying and the Spirit moves them. You you saw this with Paul when he was first sent out, that the group of uh, leaders in Antioch, I believe, were praying and the Spirit told them to lay hands upon them and send them out. What Paul is telling Timothy is not to lay hands upon anyone too hastily. In other words, when someone is saved and you see that transformation, it is amazing. It's wonderful and it's phenomenal because it is a new life. That is what God has designed as salvation. 
And that should be normative, and it is normative for true salvation. It's not normative for religious activity, okay? But yeah, you see that. But you don't want to too hastily lay hands upon somebody. In other words, to set them apart for something or to do something. You need to make sure that the Spirit is leading you. Why is that? He says, well, when you do that, you thereby share responsibilities for the sins of others. There's a responsibility that is shared here when you lay hands upon somebody. I'll give you a quick example of this. We had a gentleman years ago, a dear, dear friend of mine to this day, and uh, he was a, a new believer. He was saved later in life, and he's a new believer. But we felt like, and by we, I mean the leadership within the church, uh, there was a group of elders, and particularly me and the, the co-pastor, we were thinking that he was supposed to be among that group of elders, but he had not been saved a long time. But how long is long, Right. But we saw so many things. And so we had another uh, friend who had just got saved. And boy, this guy, you could tell God had released a prophetic gift within him. And so it felt like we were supposed to do something. So I asked the friend with the prophetic gift that was just a really a new, new believer. I want you to pray about something is what I asked him. I said, I want you to pray about something. And he said, okay. And he, uh, he did. He didn't know what. I didn't tell him what. He said, what do you want me to pray about? So I'm not telling you. He said, okay. He called me a few days later. And he told me what he had seen. And he had actually had a vision while he was praying. And I'm not going to get into the details of it, okay, because I don't want to you know, tell you who these folks are or anything like that. But the details of the vision were amazing. He didn't know what they meant. But when he told me about it, I knew what it meant. And But I wasn't sure. And so he kept on saying something about this, and I'd ask him questions. He said, well, I don't know about this. And the more that he remembered and the more that he uh, communicated to me, the more I knew that this is absolutely something that we were supposed to do. Well, I shared it with my co-pastor buddy. He went, wow, that's sort of interesting. I went, yeah. The next Sunday at church, there were certain things that were communicated in that uh, vision that that were actually manifested in the next worship service. And when that happened, I looked over at my co-pastor buddy. He looked at me and we both knew, okay, now is the time to lay hands upon this person. We knew because we took it before the Lord in prayer. We talked about it. We discussed it uh, as a body. We examined the word. And the Lord honored that. And uh, it was just a magnificent thing that occurred uh, for the body of Christ, but particularly for the individual and his family. And so uh, Paul is just sort of warning Timothy a little bit about that. Now, let me read one more verse here uh, real quick. We may pick this up next time. Verse 23 says this. No longer, Paul's saying this to Timothy, no longer drink water exclusively, but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. <laughs> you know, some of my teetotaling brothers sort of have a hard time. with Well, that's just medicine of the day. Da, da. It was wine, guys. Get over it. You know, <laughs> get over it. The Lord tells us not to be drunk. The Lord tells us not to be a glutton, whether it's food or drink. Timothy, what's more interesting is here, he had frequent ailments. The Lord used Paul, the Lord used Timothy in healing of people, but Timothy had frequent ailments. The people that I've seen the power of God move in the most amazing ways with healing quite often had physical problems themselves. So Paul was telling Timothy, hey, drink a little wine for your stomach, because you can imagine what the state of the water was then, right? You know, because he had stomach problems and he had frequent ailments. So we can assume that those frequent ailments came about because of the stomach problem. And Paul was giving him a solution. He says, if you drink a little wine right here for this, this will help take care of your situation. And I think that sort of speaks to us. Uh, you know, it's okay to eat things and drink things to help with physical problems, okay? It's okay to take medicine. I think we would do better to use what God tells us to use first before we go to man's solutions, okay? Maybe we'll pick that up and talk about that next time because my time is up. Again, I'm Dale, and I thank you for being with me. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.